Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and after earning our 7th gym badge in Moss Deep and receiving the HM for Dive, we are underwater looking for the Team Aqua Leader, Archie. We've had a few run-ins with Maxi, but this will be our first time up against the Team Aqua Leader. We're gonna need a team of 3 here, and you know how this works by now, so let's draw some cards. For our first and only face-off with Archibald Aquilani, we're gonna be using the trio of Dratini, Ninkada, and Coughing. That isn't a great team. Three unevolved Pokemon for a battle against a Mightyena, a Crobat, and a Sharpedo. We don't exactly have strong type matchups either. We're not going to have any stab super effective moves because by the time I caught Ninkata, it had already forgotten Leech Life. Which, in fairness, was pretty terrible prior to becoming absolutely amazing in Gen 7. Let's see what moves we have managed to keep. Dart the Dratini is at level 41, and her moveset's made up of Dragon Rage, Thunder Wave, Twister, and Slam. Dragon Rage can always be handy even at this stage, and Thunder Wave is one of the most useful moves in the game. Hemi the Ninkada is also at 41, but his Metal Claw, Mind Reader, False Swipe, Mud Slap combination is a bit less helpful. Mud Slap can be nice as a Sand Attack alternative, but I really wish I could have had a Gen 7 Leech Life in this moveset. Last up we've got Primo the Coughing, who's at 43 with the moves Smog, Explosion, Sludge, and Smokescreen. The Heart Gold random card challenge really saw us taking advantage of Explosion, but this is our first chance to use it in Emerald. Let's see what it can do. Archie starts the battle with his Mightyena, and we lead off with Dratini. Intimidate immediately lowers Dart's attack, but we're mostly special with this moveset, so it shouldn't matter too much. Dratini paralyzes Mightyena with a Thunder Wave, but it doesn't prevent a scary face that slows her to a stop. Even with the stat drops, we're in control thanks to the paralysis, so call for a Dragon Rage. The flames crash into Mightyena, who's too slow to dodge or land an attack. Seeing the success of her first attack, Dart fires another Dragon Rage squarely at the Dark type. It connects once more before Archie calls for another scary face. The Team Aqua Leader uses a Super Potion to stop the third Dragon Rage from earning a knockout, but at this point it seems to be more a case of when than if. The recovery period allows Dart time to send two more blasts of Dragon Rage at Mightyena before a final scary face bottoms out her speed. It's not enough though, she's still faster than her paralyzed foe and manages to finally score the knockout with another scorching Dragon Rage. Well, that went well. Mightyena goes down without even touching Dratini and Crobat's up next. The speed drops don't really come into play here either, because there's no way Dark could outspeed Crobat anyway. Air Cutter clips Dratini, but she still succeeds in connecting with Thunder Wave, and now that Crobat's paralyzed, we can finally recall her. That switch is mostly to eliminate all of the stat drops, but when Coughing is confused, it's really in our best interest to go straight back out to Dark. The Paralysis frees her up to attack twice with Dragon Rage before a Wing Attack lands, taking her into red health. Once again, Archie uses a Super Potion just before Dratini can hit a third Dragon Wave, because he's really not very creative. We can also repeat the back-to-back -back strikes post-healing, but this time around Crobat managed to land a finishing blow with Air Cutter, taking us down to two. We send in Ninkada next, thinking that one Metal Claw should do the trick, but it comes up just short. From inside red health, Crobat survives the Steely Scratch, countering with Confuse Ray. That really goes beyond the norm and just causes Hemi to lose his mind completely. The first turn of Confusion sees Ninkada striking himself in Confusion and Crobat breaking through Paralysis to attack with Air Cutter. The second turn doesn't go any better. Hemi once again attacks himself with Metal Claw, and Crobat ignores the paralysis to score another knockout, this time with Wing Attack. That really ruins everything because I was hoping to be able to fall back on Explosion against Sharpedo, but now that's off the table. Coughing enters the battle and spits Sludge into Crobat's face, taking us into a one-on-one -on -one with a not very effective attack. Archie sends in his Sharpedo last, and a critical hit on Slash wipes out half of Primo's health right away. Not a great start. A smokescreen doesn't stop Sharpedo from using Swagger, which at this point we need to work for us. Confusion really isn't on our side here, though. Coughing hits himself while trying to use Smokescreen, but the earlier fog does at least cause Sharpedo to miss with Slash. Finally, we get some luck with the Confusion as Primo coughs up a bit more smoke to lower visibility inside the underwater cavern. We call for Sludge as Archie lets us off with a taunt, and Coughing breaks through once more to actually connect. The attack one-shot Sharpedo, which I really wasn't expecting, but I guess Coughing's kind of a beast with an attack boost, so thanks for that, Archie. After being the standout Pokemon in my worst bug run in Sword, I'll let Ninkata off for that abysmal performance, but yeah, I think all the credit here goes to Dart and Primo. We're finally finished up with Magma and Aqua, so now we can head to Setopolis City to go after the 8th and final Hoenn Gym badge. We did have to deal with all of the Weather Trio stuff before unlocking the gym, but that didn't take too long. Juan uses a team of 5, so that's how many cards we'll need to draw here. Four of his five team members rarely cause any problems, but Kingdra can be a nightmare to take down. Combining a powerful typing with double team rest and a chesto berry, Kingdra just gets more and more difficult the longer the battle goes. 
Even a dragon type isn't the perfect counter as Wands Kingdra knows Ice Beam. Let's see what we've got anyway. For the Sutopolis gym battle, we're going to be using the team of Machamp, Dodrio, Goldeen, Weepin Bell, and Bayleaf. Okay, two grass types is certainly a kind draw for a water type gym, although a couple of ice attacks may be problematic. Overall, it's a really strong team that should be enough if we can figure out a way past Kingdra. Let's check out our movesets. Koba the Machamp's up first at level 41, and he's got Revenge, Seismic Toss, Karate Chop, and Vital Throw. Hidara the Dodrio's also at 41, and she's equipped with Tri Attack, Uproar, Pursuit, and Fly. Elin the Goldeen's up third, a couple of levels higher at 43, and her moveset's made up of Horn Attack, Supersonic, Surf, and Horn Drill. An Oko move is absolutely always welcome. Diona the Weeping Bell's also at 43, with Razor Leaf, Poison Powder, Stun Spore, and Sleep Powder. Finally, we've got Chlora the Bayleaf at level 46, and Razor Leaf, Light Screen, Poison Powder, and Synthesis make up her moveset. I'm feeling reasonably confident here, but I don't have a concrete plan for Kingdra. Let's give it a go. Our face-off with the Zootopolis Gym Leader starts out fairly well. Even with Wan calling for a tract and Sweet Kiss, Love Disc doesn't get on too well. Machamp is simply too powerful and with a couple of revenge strikes takes down Wan's first Pokemon. Whiskash is up next and we recall Koba to send in Weepin Bell. Rain Dance dampens Diona's mood but a quad effective Razor Leaf blows away Whiskash to leave Wan with only three. Celio sent in next and we recall Weepin Bell to send in Goldeen. Whenever I get an Oko move in this series, I kind of want to just commit to it, and that's also the case here. After an Aurora Beam and a Water Pulse, Elin connects with Horn Drill to score another one shot, leaving us in a 5 on 2. Crawdon comes in and we make another switch out to Bayleaf. Taunt really has no effect as Chlor's Razor Leaf takes the Water type into Red Hell. Wan calls for Leer, but before Bayleaf can attack, the Stopless Gym Leader also uses a Hyper Potion. That comes to nothing as a critical hit on Razor Leaf hands us another win. We're now in a 5 on 1 against Kingdra, so in theory this one's in the bag. Theoretical victories are unfortunately not worth a lot. If you ever wanted an example of just how devastating Wan's Kingdra can be, this would be a good place to start. Our whole team falls to Kingdra, so let's try this again. This time around we lead off with Bayleaf instead of Machamp and it makes for a good start. Chlora's first Razor Leaf forces Wan to break out a Hyper Potion and after taking a few hits, another couple give us an early lead. Celio comes in next and instead of making an unnecessary switch, we leave Bayleaf in the battle. Aurora Beam isn't quite enough to finish off the Evolved Grass starter, so Razor Leaf earns Chlora another knockout. We don't want to take any needless damage, so when Kingdra's sent in we have to sacrifice Bayleaf to an Ice Beam. We call on Dodrio first because her speed should allow an early strike. Hedera's tri attack freezes Kingdra, which is exactly the stroke of luck we needed. Another triple beam isn't enough to wake up Kingdra, so Dodrio finishes off the Water Dragon, which is more or less the end of the battle. Thankfully, they removed the one third chance of tri attack to frosting a frozen Pokemon in third gen. After Weeping Bell knocks off Whiskash once again, the rest of the team combines to take down Crawdon, earning us the Rain Badge. As I mentioned earlier, Wan's entire strategy seems to rely on Kingdra doing everything. Anyway, we've got our 8 badges. That means it's time to make our way to Evergrande City to compete in the Pokemon League. There's only one more challenge in our way before we can take on the Elite Four. We've got one final battle with Wally and Victory Road, and if we can defeat him, then we'll only have 6 battles left in front of us. Wally's put together a team of 5, so that's how many cards we need to draw. For the final rival battle of Emerald, we're going to be using Nidorino, Poliwag, Drowsy, Growlithe, and Magby. It's not the strongest team to use here. Wally's whole team is made up of fully evolved Pokemon, as of Gen 3 at least. Roselia and Magneton both receive new evolutions in Gen 4, but for now they don't have any further stages. Let's have a look at the moves we'll be working with against Wally. As a race, the Poliwax got Hydro Pump, Belly Drum, Rain Dance, and Body Slam, and she's at level 43. Dougal the Growlithe's at 41, and his moveset's made up of Flame Wheel, Odor Sleuth, Helping Hand, and Takedown. Gore the Nidorino's at level 44 and has Dig, Fury Attack, Flatter, and Horn Attack in his moveset. Also at 44, Cutty the Drowsy's got Psychic, Psych Up, Poison Gas, and Headbutt. Last up is Piro the Magby, who's at level 45, and he's equipped with Flamethrower, Smokescreen, Confuse Ray, and Sunny Day. I'm not wildly confident, but I think we can do this. Let's get into it. Wally leads off with his Altaria, and we start out with Poliwag. Knowing that Wally's prone to calling for Safeguard or Dragon Dance to begin the battle, we go for Belly Drum on our first turn. 
That cuts away half of Azuraeus' HP but maxes out her attack stat. With that boost in place, Poliwag's Body Slam takes Altaria deep into red health as Wally calls for Dragon Dance. Before Poliwag can finish the job, Wally uses a full restore but that basically signals the end for Altaria. Another Body Slam leaves the Dragon back in red health but Wally switches him out before Azuraeus can earn her first KO. Magneton replaces Altaria but before the Magnets can do anything, a couple of not very effective Body Slams wipe it out. Roselia comes in next but defensively, he's just not up to snuff. A single body slam blows him away and this is starting to look pretty bleak for Wally. Altaria returns to battle but that doesn't last long. Dragon Dance is worn off and body slam knocks off the dragon leaving only two. Wally's penultimate Pokemon is Delcassie and I think you probably know what's coming. Poliwag is simply too powerful. Another body slam one shots Delcassie so now only one remains. Wally's Gardevoir has been training for this exact moment. After failing as a Ralts in Marvel City, this is where it all comes to a head. But, one Body Slam earns Poliwag a clean sweep. I really wanted to switch out to use my whole team, but sweeping with Azurea seemed so unlikely that I just had to try it. Still, I felt bad about doing this without using all 5 Pokemon, so I reloaded the game and ran it back. In this one I decided to do it without the use of Belly Drum, although by forcing the use of my whole team the Belly Drum strategy wouldn't really work anyway. There were a lot of different plans that I tried here that failed miserably because Wally's team is simply way more powerful than ours. Without Belly Drum, our team really isn't capable of dealing much damage quickly. The battle comes to an end with Piro the Magby up against Wally's Gardevoir. After taking a future sight surprisingly well, Magby lands a critical hit on Flamethrower, finishing off Wally for the second time. That was way harder than I thought it would be. It only took three attempts for the Poliwag Belly Drum run, but I've got two hours worth of footage from this one. Making the right switches at the right time took way too long to figure out. Anyway, we eventually got over the line, so we've officially made it to the Elite Four. We'll be getting started with that in the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.